So I get a lot of problems with blisters on my feet, so I'm trying these things out today. They're called um, in, in Gingies and they're like anti-blister socks, they're like toe socks, so I'm going to try them out and see how I get on with them. Hopefully I don't get any blisters climbing that thing. Got a bit of a pain in the backside to get on these. You've got to feed your toes into them one by one. Probably should have got a slightly less flacky colour. So I think you're supposed to put another pair of socks over these and the idea is your toes don't rub together and because the two layers of socks you don't blister but I'm going to give them a try anyway. Not convinced but a few people have recommended them to me so I'll have a go. So we are heading up to the top of this today. Um, this is called Red Screed. I think it's about 800 meters high or something like that um, but we're already pretty high up. We're on the top of the Kirkstone Pass anyway and this pass, this pass is pretty high anyway so Shouldn't be too difficult today, we've got nice clear weather. It looks really, really steep. You can probably see some people zigzagging off the path now, so it looks like a bit of a slog. But, but we've got a nice day, there's no rain forecast. Nice and sunny. This is one of those hikes where it's like straight into it basically so there's no gradual build up smash right off the side of it onto loads and loads of steps so uh it's gone a little bit cloudy which is always good because when it's too hot these things are horrible to do so there's our there's our kirkstone pass in there which i think is the highest pub in england supposedly might be wrong there someone will probably come on and correct me and the car's just there so we've already come uh, a bit of a distance so I'm looking forward to a nice pint there later when I come down. Can't wait. Been going about 15 minutes now and to be honest we're nearly at the top of this thing. Probably another 15-20 minutes of ascent. So if you're pretty fit it's not too bad for a half day walk. I found a fantastic little spot for a wild camp so stay tuned. I'm going to bring up the tent and I'm going to wild camp up here. It's got fantastic views, it's nice and flat and it's a little bit away from the main track. So I'm definitely going to do a wild camp up here so stay tuned for that. we got Windermere here. Um, this is the, the Kirkstone Pass coming in here. This road, which looks really, really nasty to get down, that's called the Struggle. Doesn't look too bad from this side, but as you go over that hill there, it gets really, really nasty. Not the kind of place you want to take your motor home, but a car or a little van car like mine. It's pretty good for going up there. Where's the uh, pathway gone? Nice little bit of a picky way route. Do you want to wait up that then? Yeah. Oh, go on. After you. Take a breather. As soon as the sun comes out and it hits you, it must be about 22 degrees, so you're starting to get cooked coming up these things. I prefer a bit overcast myself, you know. So the pathway kind of just peters out here. So we've got a bit of a, uh, what I consider a kind of half great scramble here. So straightforward, like in the winter might be nasty, but let's go. Oh, there's the path. Did we just miss that? No. I think it, was I think it goes round the side. Somewhat. So we've just passed some of the red screes over there. Uh, to be honest, it's a pretty boring fell list to be honest. There's nothing of interest on it. I mean, there's a there's a tarn there. It's got fantastic views, or it would have. It's quite hazy today, so you can see um, Kemia Horseshoe over there, Helvellyn is over there, just above Alex, um, probably Scarf or Pike over that way. And you've got Brothers Water down there, and you could just be forcing Windermere over that way, but to be honest, um, I wouldn't come up here again as a hike. It's great if you're at the Kirkstone Pass in. So if you're doing a day trip in the lakes, it's great because it took us 40 minutes to come up here. So probably the average hiker would probably take maybe an hour, an hour 15, something like that, if you're not that fit. So it's a good half day's walk. One good thing I did spot is that it looks like a great place for a wild camp. I saw about five spots on the way up you could wild camp in. So yeah, I'm going to give one of those a go because it looks like a good night. You could camp by that town on that ridge over there, yeah. Um, maybe stay away from the summit. And um, what about over there? We could walk down there and wild camp on that thing there. 
this looks like a nice place for a stop. Should we have some lunch here? Yeah. yeah. You got the bussies? Uh, yeah, they're in my pack, yeah. Right. right, you want a sandwich? Yeah, go on. to the summit and um, we were just going to enjoy a nice sandwich here and um, I've and um, I can't find the sandwiches anywhere so I'm assuming I've left them on the dashboard of the car where they're probably getting cooked by the sun right now so we'll probably have cooked bacon or something or cooked chicken by the time we get down have we got any food at all I've got Snickers topic fruit and nothing chocolate raisins bar of chocolate yeah I'm just got a bar of chocolate right over good job good job it's not high isn't it bar of chocolate the worst thing about leaving your sandwiches is when you get back down and they've been in the car and it's a sunny day, they're going to be absolutely rancid, so they'll just have to go on a bit. I think we paid about £10 for two sandwiches and a couple of snacks, so... Yeah, that's not for the services. Yeah, we, 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 bought, we bought sandwiches off the services, so it cost us about 10 quid basically for two crappy butties, so that's just 10 quid down this way. Oh, well, at least it's nice here. Yeah. I think we should camp here. This looks like a great spot. I think if you just if you go just over this little tarn here and onto that ridge there, you can see the whole of Windermere. The trick with wild camping is finding places that other people haven't been to before. There's nothing worse than turning up on a wild camp and there's 200 people with tents on top of a fell. But this looks really quiet up here, and I've, I don't think many people know about this, so I'm going to give it a go next week. 